What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? It's your girl, A. Y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Diva time. What's up, everybody? What's up? Girl, look, okay? I almost got on here and totally forgot to put in my tooth. Like, like that serious. I've been leaving the house forgetting that I got to put it in the tooth in my mouth. Sometimes I really don't care. Sometimes I just don't say shit to people. But, girl, I was just about to get on here and start yapping. And then I realized when I looked in the mirror, like, girl, you are missing another part of your mouth. Put your tooth in. Put your tooth in. So, yes, you guys, still waiting on my partials. Um, they come in on the 18th. So, next week, either next week or the week after that, on the 18th of November. I am, like, really excited about it. Like, can you imagine somebody being excited about getting a tooth? Or teeth, rather, you know, like a little partial denture with some teeth on it. Can you, like, literally imagine? I know people do get excited about shit like that. Like, serious. Because if you ain't got no teeth, how are you supposed to eat? You know? So I will definitely be sharing that with you guys. But anyway, other than that, I hope y'all all having, like, a really great day. You know, it's your girl, A. We came to not slay, but to chit-chat today. Now, let me tell y'all, okay? First of all, y'all know... My channel is mainly about wigs, like beauty influencer. I'm not really sure how I became a beauty influencer um, because I know really nothing too much about putting on makeup. I can do myself and give you all a tutorial of me doing myself. But other than giving you guys facts or pros and cons and to do's and not to do's, that's not me. But y'all know I mainly just do like a lot. I do a lot of wigs, right? So actually... I haven't wore a wig, like a wig wig, like how I used to wear wigs. Like when I say how I used to wear wigs, meaning I wasn't leaving the house without my wig on. Um, girl, sometimes I'll be sleep with my wig on because I'd have that bad boy hairspray down or glued down, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That was me. And it didn't bother me. Now, over the years, you know, people change. Everybody has the right to change. We all just change as a person. We grow out of certain things. We grow out. We grow into other things. You know, sometimes it's just um. A thing maybe we going through something in life and change is just good sometimes change is good depending on what it is right but like i was telling y'all i told y'all this before i never would leave the house without wearing my wigs or doing my hair my hair being done now, i never would leave the house with my hair messy in general period okay that's just not me i i don't leave the bonnets on um you know i might i may leave with a head wrap on you know wrap it to the neatness but um as far as, you know, I would just basically always like to wear wigs. And this went on for years, okay? Me wearing a wig, like, on a daily basis went on for years. And I always swore to myself, I'm going to be that grandmother when I have grandkids. And when I do have grandkids, okay, this was back then. And I still felt that way to a certain degree. Like, I'm going to be that grandmother who loved wearing them long hair wigs. Because I used to say to myself, I don't understand why older women always want their hair short. Why are they always wanting hair, short hair? Like, short hair? Why they just don't wear long and luxurious? This be me now, right? Now I'm at the point in my life where it's like, girl, I hate wearing a wig all day. If you, you have to pay me to wear a wig all day. And right now I'm sitting here and I feel like I feel like a tomboy in a wig. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's this fucking T-shirt that I got on or if it's the weed that I just smoked. But when I tell you that I really feel like I look like a, a tomboy and I really am blaming it on these fucking T-shirts that I bought. And I hate to feel this way. You ever just, you just, we, we just really criticize the hell out of ourselves. Like straight up, we are the worst critics of our own selves. But I tell you guys, no lie. I said, you know what? I'm going to put on my wig today for this real talk because I got two cornrows in my hair and the cornrows been lasting a lot longer because, you know, I sleep with a bonnet on now. I hate sleeping with a bonnet on because that should make me hot, but whatever I got used to it. So my two cornrows lasted longer and I said, well, I'm going to leave them in because I got a couple of wig videos to do. You know what I'm saying? I got a synthetic wig try on for she in to do and I'm not about to recornrow my hair. You know, I really don't even want to touch my hair. You know, I feel like let me just leave it the fuck alone because I just really don't want it to fall out any more than it's already fallen out. So I said... I mean, I could just get on camera with my two cornrows and rock that shit. And I should have just did that. And instead, I felt like, you know what? I'm going to put on this wig and I'm going to look cute. And I'm going to put on one of my new t-shirts. Now, let me tell y'all about these t-shirts real quick. Now, y'all know how I really love t-shirts. You know, y'all look on my videos, graphic tees, plain white tees. I just love t-shirts. I'm a t-shirt type of gal, period. You know what I'm saying? Give me a good t-shirt and I'm in. Like, you know what I mean? I will, I will dress up a damn t-shirt. I got three full drawers full of t-shirts, graphic tees, but I really didn't have a lot of white tees. So you know how I went and I bought these white tees, right? I bought these white tees from um, Target because I love the brand Goodfellas. That's my brand. I love them. But I got the V-neck ones. 
And so I started feeling like, well, you know what? I'm going to get the crew neck ones because I started feeling like I didn't like the V neck ones anymore. And I just, I don't know. I just started feeling like I look like a stud in one. I, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect, but that's just how I started feeling. So I'm going to just go back to the crew neck ones. So I sat on Amazon the other night and I said to myself, girl, find you some new t-shirts. But I really don't fuck with the women t-shirts because they always be just doing too much when it comes to women t-shirts. They want to make them flare at the bottom like we ain't already big enough, like shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, well, I'm going to go for the man's t-shirts because that's what I like to wear. So, you know, I'm I'm reading through the comments. I'm looking at them. And I know about bacon neck. You know what I'm saying? You know bacon neck when the collar is just all out of shape and it ain't doing what it's supposed to do. It's not laying flat. I know about that shit. So I'm sitting here and, you know, I'm, I'm on my phone at night. I'm in the bed. I think I got in the bed like at 7 o'clock because that'd be me. I want to, girl, if I could get in the bed by 7 p.m., I'm in. I'm happy and I'm relaxed. I ain't going to sleep, but, you know, I'm trying to relax. So, you know, I said, okay, let me look for these shirts. So I'm scrolling. You know, Amazon got a whole lot of shit. And um, I, I look at some some of the prices. It's like, are you crazy for three T-shirts? What the fuck? And then I'm looking at the pictures of the guys wearing them. Like, that, that shit is thin. Like, I'm very particular when it comes to T-shirts. You got to be a certain material. That's why I really don't care for those T-shirts on Shein. Because they not T-shirt material. They not, like, they just not. So I, I got a couple of them in my cart because I'm just going to make up my mind at the end of this process, right? And I come across Glidian. I think that's the name, right? Is that how you say it? Hold on. Let me make sure how you say that shit. So I come across the brand Gildan. You know, y'all seen the brand Gildan before. Gildan got like all kind of t-shirts for people that work construction. You know, those bright neon t-shirts. They, you know, they sell them single at Walmart, whatever. You know, Gildan. You know, people be using them and putting graphics on that brand, Okay. And I know it's a good brand because, you know, all the homeboys or whatever, the men, they love rock and white t-shirts. And I don't know why the hell I like rock and white t-shirts, but this I'm just like a t-shirt type of girl, okay? So I'm like, oh, Gildan? Okay, yes. I know about that. I know about that life. Girl, they had... <laughs> when I tell you I was tickled pink about... The how many you got in the pack for the price? I was tickled the fuck pink because you know if you go to Walmart and you get a pack of six, you paying a good hefty penny for like some fucking fruit of the loom bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's what you get. And I don't recall them ever selling like packs of Gildan at Walmart. I just always see them selling them single in like those really bright colors. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I see how many you get in for the price, girl, when I tell you I was tickled pink, I was tickled pink. All right. I said, oh, hell to the fucking no. You getting 12 fucking t-shirts for $35? What? A bitch is about to buy those. When I tell you, I had to look at the reviews. There was over 200 and something thousand people that done left a review. That ain't even saying that that's how many people bought them shits. But because, you know, not everybody's leaving a review. But I mean, but yeah, I was like, and then I went back to the Hanes. I think it was either Hanes or Fruit of the Loom ones. Because you could get like a, um, a six pack for like. $18. And I'm like, okay, hmm. I don't know. Then I start reading the Hanes or Fruit of the Loom ones. I'm like, oh, they complain about bacon neck after the first wash. No, we're not about to get those. So I get these t-shirts and I put them in my car because I'm 12. Do you know what I could do with 12 t-shirts? I And plus I have other white ones. Girl, I'll be happy for days. Plus I really like to wear white t-shirts when I'm doing my videos because I don't have to fight with the lighting. Everything is perfect. So I figured 12? Oh girl, yes. I could wear a white t-shirt for, for like, you know, some videos. Because you know, I do more than one video in a day. So I'm wearing one t-shirt. I could do, you know what I'm saying? I'm, look, girl, listen. I got this goddamn pack of t-shirts, 12 for $35. Now, I was really happy about that shit. But my main thing about me when it comes to t-shirts, hold on. I don't like that shit too close to my neck up here. Because then I still start feeling like it's choking me. And then I start feeling like it's giving me like this, this studdish look. And I don't want to... I feel like the only thing that I'm missing right now is some basketball shorts, okay? I don't know. I really want to send the t-shirts back because it did say that I could. And I did start a return. But I hate bringing it to the UPS store because it seems like it takes my refund. Even if it's refunded back to my Amazon balance, it'd take like three fucking weeks versus bringing it to Kohl's and I get it. I get my refund within a couple of hours. So I really don't. And there was no Kohl's option to return these T-shirts. So at this point, I'm like, well, you know what? I think I'm just going to have to keep them. I don't want to spend no more money waiting for money. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying. So, yeah, I feel kind of like tomboyish right now. And I don't know if it's the t-shirt, which I'm I'm really thinking it's the t-shirt. 
Then I said, I don't know if it's the eyebrows. I don't I don't even know, but I'm just going to stop talking about my goddamn self and stop kicking myself down. But I thought I would share that with you guys. You know, we've spent enough time talking about these fucking t-shirts. But I hope y'all are having like a really great day. Other than that, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm going to let this week be just okay. I did go to the doctors on Wednesday morning, but Tuesday I did speak to my doctor. You know what she said? You know, she spoke to me. Remember I told you guys I had a verbal telephone call appointment with her. So she asked me questions and we started speaking on the trazodone, right? And I said to her, um, you know, I was looking up some of the side effects and I did see that you can lose hair. And she said, oh yeah, you can. And you can lose loads of it. And I said, so you knew about this, but then why are you guys saying that it's rare if you already know that you can lose loads of hair? So long story short, she made me, um, she, she, she didn't make me, but she advised me to stop in whenever I had a free moment so that she could get some blood for me. She wanted to do some new blood tests. She wanted to do some more blood tests on me. This time she was going to do it for, um, thyroids. Now I told y'all before my mom had thyroids. Um, when I was, um, I remember when my grandfather passed, I was 14 and my mom got so thin, just really, really thin. And then, you know, she got big and then she got thin again. She had like a really bad active thyroid and it took like a couple of years I guess to get it really under control because she went through a lot of things when she had thyroid. She her eyes started to bulge. Um, they didn't start to, they did, and they lasted, they stayed like that, bulged um for like a few years. Um, I think they gave her medication, which you know helped her bring down the bulgeness. I don't know what you want to call it. So, but she also did lose her whole entire front perimeter of her hair, like all hair. It, it looks like hair was never even there, it's just like all skinned. Um and this was from her thyroid. So, and she, she did lose a lot of hair, a lot of her hair, her hair got thin. Um, so she, my doctor, you know, like I was saying, she has me, she had me come in. I went on Wednesday morning, basically, and let them do me a blood test. Girl, when I tell you, I hate when people poke and, poke and pry you for the needles, okay? Do you know how many times I got stuck on Wednesday just so they could get one tube of blood out of me? Okay, so first of all, she started on the right arm, okay? She started on the right arm, and she said, do you have a problem when you're getting blood? I said, sometimes, you know, but... It's, when I go to certain places, it seems like they get it right on the spot. So I got poked in the right. I'm, I don't, I'm going to just tell you, I was poked in the right arm twice. Then I was poked in the left arm twice. And then finally I got it poked in my hand and that's where they got the blood from. Okay. So I had like this big bruise on my hand and it's finally going away. Um, but yeah. You'll see it probably in like one of my wig videos. You'll see I have like a, a discoloration in my hand. But um, so it took the five times to poke me. And the whole time I'm sitting there like, if they don't get that shit the fuck right, we're going to have a problem here. OK, so I did that. I guess I'm just now waiting for the results to come back. I don't know. I th I'm thinking that thyroids are hereditary. But then again, I don't know. Some, you know, I'm not a medical doctor or anything like that. So I really can't say. But I just would really hope that I don't have thyroids. But she also did give me a prescription or referral, excuse me to a dermatologist and she's texting me that today um so i just got to give them three to five business days to give me a call back and make an appointment because she feels like that i can use some shots now when i looked up those shots i really don't know about people giving me needles in my scalp i would really think that that would hurt like hell but I think they're called cortisone shots, if I'm correct. Like, there's cortisone for everything. You know, that is what I use to get my keloid to go flat with the cortisone shots. But then it grew back. You know what I'm saying? So is it is that going to happen to my head? You're going to you're gonna help me grow some hair and it's going to fall right out? Like, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I'll let you guys know how that goes when I do make the appointment. But other than that, you know, we already have a sponsor for this video. Y'all know my people at uh, Dossier Perfume. You know what I'm saying? They have like the best perfume. And y'all already know it's holiday season. It's about to be gift giving. Y'all got to get y'all gift list out there, okay? Y'all got to get y'all gifts for your mama, your gifts for your poppy, your gifts for your grandma, your kids, your your, your co-workers, your neighbors. Y'all got to get y'all gift list going. And what better place to start at is some smell goods. Because I'm pretty sure you got some co-workers that could really use some smell goods and i don't mean that in no shady way i'm just saying they may they may cook you know really use some good smell goods okay this is being sponsored by today's video is being sponsored by dossier you already know what i say about dossier girl girl get your smell on i feel like they are the best inspired scent perfume website company brand there is okay like their prices are super duper affordable you guys you can join the membership if you like this free shipping but dossier has some amazing perfumes not only do they have some amazing inspired scents but they also do have their own wellness smell good scents too 
do. Like I said last time, we be having repeats in my house. Now, when I tell y'all we be having some repeats in my house, we be having some repeats in my house. Now, it ain't even just me this time. Okay, because listen, what did I tell y'all the last time? And I showed y'all this in a video, like probably like three weeks ago, two weeks ago. My number one favorite perfume right now from Dossier is their Floral Lavender. Mm -hmm. Yes, girl, which is the inspired scent of Issa Laurent's Libre. Girl, every time I put on that perfume, I promise you, I kid you not, people be like, you smell good, you smell so good. What is that you're wearing? You if you love perfumes, you best to try this one right here. When I tell you this one, this bottle right here is not for me this time. This one is for Tati because she kept smelling me. And okay, so Tati be like, all my other perfumes remind her of old lady perfumes. That's what she always say. I don't know how. How does Gucci remind you of old lady in general, okay? But this one, she always compliments me on. Now, this does smell really, really good. I will say that. But I need some other perfumes that are gonna people are going to be like, oh, you smell so good. You know what I'm saying? I be layering it. I be, you know, I do all that cool stuff. But every time I wear the Libre, people be like, you smell so good. The next one here we have is Ambery Peach, okay? Ambery Peach. This is inspired by Tom Ford's Bitter Peach. One right here, one of the unisex ones. This does smell really, really good. Like, I use these as the scent cards testers. And when I tell you I open at the top, you can smell that. Girl, this smell good. Mm. It gives you, like, this fruity scent with, like, a nice, strong scent. You know what I mean? Like, it, it smells like just, like, fresh peaches to me. Like, fresh peaches, but not too much, but with a masculine, strong scent or, like, in a unisex kind of way in the background. Like, you can smell the peach in it, but you can also smell, like, the floralness in it as well. All I know is it smells amazing. Ambery Peach is a good one as well. Now, I figure, look, I'm going to try some different scents, different brands that I may not even have heard of before. You know, just because you don't hear of it doesn't mean it don't exist. You know what I'm saying? And don't mean that it don't smell real good. So what I be doing is I'll go like on TikTok or Instagram and I'll look up like certain inspired scents on Dossier to see what other people are saying about the scent, the brand, the perfume, what have you. And then I'll decide, well, yeah, I'm going to try this one. That's how I got involved with the Issa Laurent's Libre, the floral lavender. Okay, that's how I got involved with that. But this one right here is inspired by Joe Malone and it's their Wood Sage and Sea Salt Cologne. Now, this is a really good scent. It's like, this reminds me of like earthy scents. And this is what I like. Like, I like what I said. Um, I like like the earthy scents, the sage, the woodsy type of scents. This is called Woody Sage. This one is like one of those scents that are very universal, also has like woodsiness, very earthly scents. That's what I like to call them, earthly scents. I love like the floral scents too, because floral is earthly, but I love like the really like sage, like the musk type of smells. And this just gives me like universal, like unisex type of vibes. I love a good perfume where you can, you know, it'll go both ways. It just smells like so intense. This smells just like that. Very intense and like earthly. Y'all yeah, know how I said Dacia has their own sense, not the inspired side, but their own in-house scents, okay? Dacia Originals. So this is like the third time that I've tried one of their originals. And this one right here is called Slice of Heaven. Like, I didn't even know what to think when I saw Slice of Heaven amongst what else I was choosing. But I just felt like this. Who wouldn't want to smell like a slice of heaven? Like, let's be for real. Like a slice of heaven, it just sounds so pretty. It just sound, it smells so, it sounds so inviting. It just sounds so mesmerizing, just classic, soft. It just, it just sounds pleasant. You know what I'm saying? Like a slice of heaven, like who really don't want to be smelling like a slice of heaven? So that's the reason why I chose it. I chose a slice of heaven just because of the name. And I just thought that the name was just everything. And this is like, this has got to smell really, really good if it is called a slice of heaven. But slice of heaven has orange, jasmine, blossom, coffee, vanilla, musk, white woods, patchouli. There goes that word that I really like to say a lot, patchouli. I don't know what it is, but I really like to say patchouli. You can either use that word and make it sound really creepy or you can make it sound like really, really nice patchouli. I don't know. But anyway, this one right here was my choice because of the name and it does smell good i don't know what a slice of heaven smells like but i could just imagine like i said it's got to smell divine right and when you smell it it smells soft it, it smells very classy it's not overbearing you know what i'm saying it's not like too much it's just right a slice of heaven so y'all, you know, 
what to do. Check the link down below, girl. What I say, it's gift giving season and gifting season, okay? Y'all know y'all got to get prepared because it's about to be Black Friday. It's about to be Christmas, like by tomorrow, because that's how fast it's going to get here. So get your list out, but just make sure you check out Dossier because they have like everything amazing. And who don't want to smell amazing, girl? I know I do. All right, y'all. So we're going to get into this real talk, okay? Y'all already know what to do. If y'all want to have a real talk with me featuring your life episode, your, you know, neat, your email, your letter, your story. You can send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk, so that way I know that it is a Real Talk episode. That way, if I need to search it, I can find it. Or you can also email me at aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Please do the same with the subject line, placing the word Real Talk in there. If you want to change the names of the people you're speaking of in this Real Talk, you can go ahead and do so and let me know in the email. If not, then, you know, I'll change it for you. But on that note, let's get into this real talk, okay? that I have to realize what I need to do when I am using my phone to record is to look at the green dot on the phone. Because if I don't, I look at the actual screen. And when I look at the actual screen, it's not like you're giving a direct eye contact because you feel like you are, but you're really, really not. So I have to really focus on that. I'm going to have to like put a little sign or some shit. I don't know, but I'm going to have to really focus on that. But anyway, so let's get into this real talk. Real talk. She swears she is not black. Now, good morning, Miss Muffins. Thank you so much for reading my post. So please call me Danny for this real talk. And my friend, you can call her Amber. So Amber and I have been friends for a little over three years, and we met at a job fair. We are both Black. We are both in our mid-30s. Miss April, I love Amber like a sister, but she really needs a grip on reality. Like I said, we are both Black women, and it seems that Amber is either ashamed of her Black heritage or is very confused. Now, I am a brown-skinned woman, and so is she on the color spectrum of I would say like a shade of Janet Jackson's color. We are both in that color brown spectrum. So people know our ethnicity and she should too. Miss April, please tell me why Amber thinks of herself as a non-black woman. She doesn't act black nor talk black. And I'm sure people are going to say, what does talking and acting black mean? That doesn't mean she doesn't think she's not black because she is not doing the stereotypical behavior. It's not just the behavior, it's what she says. She says things like, I identify as a white woman. I wish my skin was lighter. White people have better lives. They are more civilized and know how to behave in public. She will say things to me like, watch me get me a good white man to marry me because that is what you need to be happy and settled with in life. Miss April, I have had many talks with Amber about loving the skin she's in and never putting our people down. She speaks in a tone like she's from the suburbs, all high pitched and dragging her words like they do at times. When we go out, Amber is always like, I'm not going no place that has a bunch of black people because you know how I feel about them. Miss April, I don't want to be judgmental towards her or any person, but I'm trying to figure out how to get her to realize black is beautiful and there is nothing wrong with being black. But she keeps hitting me with the I identify as a white woman. What would you do if this was your friend? Oh. So Danny want to know, what would I do if I had a friend like Amber? I don't know. I I don't think we would probably be friends for too long because that shit sounds ridiculous to me. And I'm not going to just put up with any old type of bullshit. So, yeah, I don't think that we would be friends too long. If my friend, if I had a friend that acted anywhere like Amber... I really don't think we would be friends for too long because I would just find it to be after a while, I would probably find Amber to be so fucking annoying. And it's like, how many times are you going to tell a person that you're black or not to be ashamed of who you are 
And on top of that, I don't want to really hear you praising any other race besides your own. You know, if you can't praise your own race, don't go trolloping around in the streets praising nobody else's race. That's my thing. Now, the part where she said, what did she say? She said she's going to get her a white man to marry her because that's what you need in life to be happy and settled down. Settled and settled in life. I'm going to marry me a white man because that is what you need to be happy and settled in life. Settled in life. Okay, listen, let me tell you something. Now... Me personally, I don't really care what color you are as a as a person. I don't care what color you date. Um, I used to be back in the day more into like, you know, I'm not dating anybody outside of my race. And that's how I was always, always felt, you know. I don't want to date anybody outside of my race. And I had that I had that right. That was my preference, right? Everybody has a preference. But as you grow as a person or you grow older, your preferences change, just like I was saying about like the wigs or what have you. And I did realize, you know, as long as the person that I choose to spend time with is a decent human being and is when I say decent, I don't mean just like subpar. I mean, like he does the right things. He's a gentleman. He treats me right. He treats my children, my family correctly. He treats his family properly. He's a hard worker. You know, he's not an inmate or wasn't an inmate. And I even can't really even say it wasn't an inmate because even those type of people turn out to be somebody really blessed and really great in life after they've been through the mistake that they've been through and learn their lessons. So we can't even really say too much. I'm not an inmate, but it just depends on your crime too. But you know, I don't really care what type of skin color you are anymore. I, that's, But as long as you're a good person, you know what I'm saying? All those things that I described, and then I could throw in some more if you need me to, but you get where I'm going with this, okay? So I don't really consider a white man to make you happy and make sure you're settled in life. There are some women, though, that really feel like um, white men, black women, feel like those are the ones that they are going to choose because... That's going to make their life complete and that's going to make them happy. And like Amber says, settled in life. I don't choose people because of their skin color anymore because I just feel like this. You could be an asshole with any skin color. Okay, so I don't really understand what Amber means by that because you could date a black man and he can make you real happy. You could date a white man. He can make you fucking miserable. Okay, so let's just be for real. So I don't really know. I don't think that Amber would be my friend too long. I would definitely be trying to tell her about herself. But you know what? You can only tell a person something but so many times, girl, until you blew in the face and you run out of breath. And it's just like, you know what? I give the fuck up. Amber is who Amber is. Now, I don't know. You didn't really give me too much background about Amber. Like, was she born to, like, a, a white family or was she adopted into a white family? Like, what's Amber's, you know, like, background? Because this might be, or this might play a huge part in why Amber feel that way. Amber might be adopted or fostered or was adopted or fostered into a white family. So that may be the reason why she feels that way. I don't have nothing against any kind of race, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I don't like every race and I like every race. And with that being said, you get what I'm saying? I don't like every race and I love every race, okay? Because every color, every ethnicity can get on my last goddamn nerves okay and every ethnicity could really do good for me and i could do good for them and we could be cool like peanut butter and jelly you know what i'm saying so i like everybody as long as they be respectable but amber i don't really know because y'all been friends for three years which is not a long time like i'm not saying ditch the bitch and don't be her friend no more that's not what i'm saying i just go off of how i feel i know that if that was my friend you know what i'm saying and if i really really cared for her and i really liked the friendship which i don't really think that i would like the friendship anymore if i just felt like she kept continuously putting down our people i don't really feel like i would like the friendship anymore only because i'm part of those people that you keep condemning so i'm gonna start feeling like you're not only condemning other people of our race that we don't know personally but you also are talking about me too and my family and my loved ones so i don't think that me that friendship would last for too long and i'm not saying like i said to ditch the bitch but well, i like how that sounds ditch the bitch okay you know I'm not saying to do that, but what I am saying is you've tried to talk to her. You have tried to school her on not putting her own people down. You have tried to tell her that black is beautiful. Yes, it is. You have tried to school her. You have tried to let her know that not all black people are like that. She has it in her mindset that they are. So it has, I think, like a lot of times when you see a person that acts like that, I feel like it was their upbringing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it was their upbringing. And I say that because why wouldn't it be? Even Amber's parents could both be black. She could be, she could have been raised by both of her parents. 
but it just depends on how they brought her up as a child. They could have lived in the valleys, the suburbs, where they dragged their words, like she said. And I don't know, why do they do that? They drag their words. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know what she means. Y'all know what she means. She'll be like, so how's it going today? That's dragging your word. So I don't know why they do that, but she says that... Danny, how the fuck do you even have a conversation with her, let alone be not annoyed, okay? And I'm and now I'm really starting to be annoyed by Amber myself because how the hell can you sit there at the age of mid-30s and still drag your words like that and have a full-blown conversation with her, let alone your conversations be about disrespecting other black people? Not you, Danny, but she's doing that. That, for one, is right there, dead-ass annoying. But then to just sit there and have to speak to somebody who can take an extra 20 seconds of a 10 second conversation because she drags her words. Like you don't get annoyed by that. Like, I feel like I would just get so fucking annoyed by that, you know? And I know this is like, I was supposed to give you my advice and I'm giving you my full advice. I'm telling you how I feel. We're keeping it real. We're having a real conversation here. We're real talking. I feel like Amber would be a total annoyance to me because for one, you are you're trying to kick black people back down into the gravel, okay, with your comments. Yeah, she and I wouldn't be friends for too long. However, Danny, the only thing that I can suggest for you, and this is just my opinion, is to distance yourself. You know, if you feel like she is disrespecting our heritage, our people, then what do we do when someone disrespects us? We either teach them how to respect us, which I'm pretty sure you have done by schooling her about Black is Beautiful, or we distance ourselves from them and we just back the fuck off. That's how I would handle it as a person. I wouldn't per se stop the friendship, but I would just kind of like back off and just distance myself from her because disrespect is one thing, but after a while when a person is still continuously disrespecting you and disrespecting you because talking down on black people in front of you to you is disrespectful. And after a while, a person can take but so much and they react on the shit. And why put yourself in that predicament, in that situation, on reacting on Amber where you can just avoid it and avoid her? Now, she may feel like, oh, you backed off a little bit. And if she asks you why, that's your opportunity to tell her, well, the reason why I backed off of our friendship or I backed off from you is because I felt totally disrespected by the way you speak on other black people. That's all you have to do. Sometimes people don't really listen to you until they need to listen to you. You understand what I'm saying? So what I mean by that is, yeah, you sat there before you tried to school her about not to talk about black people the way she's talking about them. Black is beautiful. Not all black people are like that. You've already schooled her and you've already had the opportunity to teach her and tell her not to speak on black people. You've already did that. But obviously she's not taking your advice. So what happens is you've distanced yourself and she's noticing that. So then she's going to ask you again. And now you're going to tell her the reason why. And that is going to be her opportunity to either stop talking like that or continue to talk like that and realize that your friendship and hers will eventually deteriorate. And it is what it is, period. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sometimes you just got to leave people alone. You got to distance yourself. I get that respect is due and the respect is earned. But you know what? They've been friends for three years, okay? And they met at a job fair. That means both them females didn't have a job or they wanted a better job. Either way, you know what I'm saying? They met somewhere where they was trying to get some good employment. And that's cool. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like let's not let's not sit and put our own people down. Let's not put nobody down. Like, I'll be the first to say, like, I'm not the best person in the world. I definitely am not. I'll talk about a motherfucker because I don't care. You know what I'm saying? And if you ask me, was I talking about you? I will tell you I was talking about you. Okay? And that's how I do. I'm not, like, like big and bad, big, big Billy badass. That ain't me. But I'm not, I don't got no reason to lie. I'm a grown-ass person. I'm a grown-up. Okay? I'm an adult. Like, if you ask me, was I talking about you? Yes, I was talking about you. And the reason why I was talking about you, and I'll give you the reason why. You know, you can only respect that. You know what I'm saying? But I just feel like let's not put people down. You know, I, I'm quick to, to go off on a person. I'm quick to put somebody down only when they piss me off and they disrespect me. And that's what I do out of disrespect. Is it right? No, it's not. But I don't like being disrespected neither. And I just try to avoid disrespectful ass people. I try to avoid disrespectful ass shit. I try to just keep myself out the loop of disrespect. OK, because I know how I can get when somebody be disrespectful to me. And it's not like I like going around hurting people's feelings because I really don't. I just that's not me. But I just feel like, you know what? But if you continuously disrespect somebody, after a while, they're going to lash out on you. And they're going to they gonna fucking feel the bullshit. And they're going to want to go upside your head. And I just feel like, you know what, for Danny's sake, maybe she should just push back a little bit from Amber. Because Amber's not getting it. I don't understand why. You know what? 
and not saying it's an excuse that maybe she was brought up that way because it's not right. Like, you don't, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like this, like, I don't give a fuck if nobody don't like black people. I really don't care if people don't like black people because you know what? We're going to be, we're going to be black for the rest of our lives. And y'all know who I'm talking to, those who you are brown in color or whatever. But I just feel like this, like, you know what I'm saying? You can either like it, like us or leave us alone. It doesn't even matter. We're going to continuously still be here just like every other race. And I just feel like, you know what? When you are a race that has gone through so much trials and tribulations in life and you are part of that race why would you want to put down the other part of your race like why would you want to do that like you know what i'm saying i don't get it you know that's like when, when people be like oh other women putting other women down yeah well women gonna do that shit regardless it don't matter you know what I'm saying yeah uplift every woman we should do that and that's what we should do because you know what we get it rough we as women really have it tough we always get kicked down but we be like the stronger species and i don't give a fuck we may be stronger as in mindful and mind wise but but we might not have that muscle strength like some men do you know some women may just do have that strength but we we are the strongest species i don't give up what nobody said okay but we as women go through a lot of shit but you know i, I just i hate to see other women put other women down but i'll tell you what though if a bitch come for me i'm gonna come for her ass too i'm gonna come for your motherfucking neck for sure i don't give a fuck what race ethnicity you are female purple green blue whatever yeah i'm gonna come for you too but i just feel like yeah danny back off of amber because she, she might be going through some shit you know what i'm saying and she just don't realize that shit and i feel like you know what if y'all are such good friends she'll realize like after a while she's been talking too much i don't know i don't want to use it as an excuse for her but she might have been brought up that way anyway moving right along okay all right so here we go hello miss april my name is garen garen hello miss i'm sorry hello miss april my name is garen and i am the father of a beautiful handsome little boy who goes by the name garen jr my son is eight years old and i have not seen him in over three years due to his mother I know you may feel that I'm no good or lying because I am a man, but Miss April, here is a snippet of my story. His mother and I did really good with co-parenting. We both would have one week on and one week off, which worked well for the both of us. Plus, we were only about a 15-minute drive from one another. We didn't make it as a couple, and I can say I am some of the cause of this. My mother was also some of the blame. She always found it her business to be in ours. I wasn't the best either, meaning I cheated once, wasn't really active in the beginning of the pregnancy, but I stood up and did what I was supposed to do as a man. From then on, we had a great friendship and co-parented great up until my ex, my son's mom, we can call her Jeannie, up until Jeannie got upset. My mother once again inserted herself. She called Jeannie up asking what she bringing my son over and what time. She needs to hurry up because people will not wait on her. Miss April, I am not sure why my mother would be so rude on the phone to Jeannie, but I guess this would be the last time she spoke to Jeannie in that manner because Jeannie handed my mother her pearls and that is just a nice way of putting it. Miss April, ever since then, I have not heard from her or seen my son and this has been going on three years now. I don't know where she lives and it's not even in the same state as myself anymore. I did get word that she moved out of state two years ago. I do follow her on social media, but she will not reply to any messages and I am not sure what to do at this point. I pay child support every two weeks and I have been since he was a baby. The money is deducted directly from my paycheck. I just need to know what you would do if this was you. Thank you, Garen. Garen. Okay. So Garen got himself a little boy, he eight years old, a little Garen Jr. And he ain't seen his baby mama in over three years due to his mother. Okay. Now, wait, this is the, okay. Wait, wait, wait. And not due to his mother. Okay. So he, had, I haven't seen my son in over three years due to his mother, due to um, Jeannie. Okay. Yeah. So basically, Darren's mother, Darren's own mother, okay, doesn't know how to mind her fucking business. And this is the reason why Darren's baby mama, Jeannie, does not speak to him nor hasn't been around him in over three years due to Darren's mother inserting herself in everybody but her own business, it seems like. This what i be telling y'all i told y'all this like some weeks ago remember when i told y'all i don't i don't get into my son and my daughter-in-law's affairs you know i said i do feel like she deserves better because that's how i felt because i know my son but i don't get into involved in the affairs like i don't want to be part of none of their bullshit 
I don't want to know about your arguments. I don't want you inserting me. Like, I would hate when my son would tell me shit because I don't want to be a part of that. Like, what are you telling me for? You're a grown ass man. She's a grown ass woman. And I'm your mother, but I am not your referee. I don't want to be inserted in that shit. And just because I'm your mother, don't feel like I'm going to take your side, which 99.9% of the time I never did because, you know what I'm saying? I didn't insert myself and I didn't want to be in that shit. So I didn't take nobody's side. But this is the problem with some mothers that seem like, is he like an only child? Is Garen an only child? Because I noticed that some mothers that when they have like only one children, they just be so overprotective over them. And there's nothing wrong with being overprotective. But when they're grownups and they're adults and they're out in the world and they humping around, and they got a girlfriend or a wife or whatever, and a baby on the way or a baby mama or whatever, it's time for you to mind your business. Like, you know, I would never allow anybody to hurt my child, my son, my full grown son, but I'm not going to insert my business or myself into his business. So Garen's mother basically called up Jeannie, his baby mama, and asked her, was she bringing over the little boy? And if so, she needs to hurry up because ain't nobody waiting for her. Now, first of all, what I tell y'all, okay, listen, in-laws are one thing, and I just try to make everybody irrelevant in my life that I used to deal with because I just don't have the time nor the bullshit to be bothered with none of the nonsense, okay, that y'all carry on in y'all everyday day-to-day lives. But in-laws and mothers that be meddling is just like to be the worst because I've also been there and I've been in a situation like that when I was married. Okay. So yes, I, I understand that one thing. And it feels like Jeannie been taking this shit for a minute because he did say that she couldn't take it anymore. And she just told her off. He said that she handed his, she, Garen said Jeannie handed his mother her pearls. Now, he said that's the nicest way he could put it. So y'all already know she handed her her ass. Okay. Yes, she did. Listen, I also know about that because as a mother and as a woman, I tried to be very respectful to my own in-law. Okay. And I always did. I was always respectable, always respectable. But then it was that one time that the the respect that I was given you wasn't giving it back. You just kept doing me like that. And, you know, a person just goes off after a while. And I can honestly say to Jeannie, kudos to her, because, Garen, I'm sorry to say this, but your mother seems like a meddling ass monster, okay, where she needs to learn how to mind her business. Now, here the thing is, you haven't seen your son in over three years because you feel like your mother scared Jeannie away. And she might have just done that because a person can take but so much. After a while, it's like, you know what, fuck you, fuck you, and definitely fuck you. I'm out of here. I don't even want to be bothered with the bullshit no more. And I can understand understand why Jeannie did spit her last spew to your mother and then bounce okay but I don't feel like she should have kept your son from you now if you say you follow her on social media you haven't seen her in three years you know that she doesn't live in your state anymore for like the past two years but you follow her on social media but you also pay child support every two weeks now this is where you can start from now I'm pretty sure that she Jeannie has given child support maybe some type of forwarding address of where she moved to I would hope so you know what I'm saying? Because I don't really know. I, I, I'm the one that never really got any child support. But I do know that they, they do have like these cards. I did get one at one time. They uh, have these um, debit cards. Okay. They have these debit cards. Now, I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't know. Maybe she, you know, I can't really say if she gave a child support, your child support unit a forwarding address because they have debit cards now that you can just put the child support money on. So you really don't need to send paper checks to a home. OK, especially if it's being deducted from your your paycheck. So and it's every two weeks. So it's probably on a debit card. I'm pretty sure, though, there is a way that you can find out where she's at. You know, first of all, if you follow her on social media, maybe check out the surroundings, see if she gives a location. But I still would not give up. You know what I mean? Like, I understand that people go through shit. People get upset. You know what I'm saying? People just feel like, well, you know, oh, she's not doing her part or she's over there in my business and you know, she's not doing my son right. Like, Garen, the first thing you really need to do, though, is I really feel like you need to talk to your mom because she's the reason for you going through the things that you go through. But also, you as a man is the reason why you go through things the way you go through. You have to put your foot down to your mother. I'm not saying be disrespectful to your mama because I'm a mother. And don't go at her being disrespectful because you know how I feel about men being disrespectful to their mother because you know my son was very disrespectful to me. But what I'm saying to you is put your foot down, meaning you need to tell her that she needs to stay out of you and Jeannie's affairs. You know, I had to have this talk with my ex-husband quite a few times because of the things that was going on in our relationship and the people that 
was meddling, okay? And as a woman, it gets to be very frustrating when your husband's mother is meddling in your business and in your affairs. And when he, when she feels that she can speak to your other half disrespectfully, then she feels like she can do whatever the fuck she wants to do. So therefore, I feel like you really need to let your mother know that her place is your be, being your mother, not Jeannie's mother, and not being disrespectful to Jeannie and meddling in you guys' affairs. But I also feel like she owes Jeannie apology as well. Because if she hadn't been rude and disrespectful, then maybe none of this would have occurred and you might have still been seeing your son. Now, the one thing that I don't like and I don't think that is fair is involving the child. And I know that y'all may feel like, oh, she didn't involve the child, but she really did. When she took the little boy away from his father and hasn't communicated with him in over three years. Now, the little boy is eight years old now, okay? So this happened when he was five. So that means that the little boy does have knowledge and awareness of who his father is. And I'm pretty sure he definitely remembers who his dad is. So that to me is like involving the child that part right there Jeannie was definitely wrong in the way she handled the situation yeah cuss the lady out that's what you should have did you should have been done did that but running away from your problems is never going to solve anything especially when you have a child involved so now the little boy is suffering god knows what he's being told about his father or what he's not being told you know his mother could not be saying anything at all and that's just as bad as just that's just as bad as saying oh your father's a deadbeat or whatever but i really do feel like garen you really need to apologize to um you also need to apologize to Jeannie as well only because your mom was involved and had you been a man man you should have been put a stop to this and none of this would have ever happened so you do really need to apologize to Jeannie for not standing your ground and standing up as a grown man and putting your foot down of your meddling mom your meddling monster mom okay and as far as your mother well she definitely needs to apologize to Jeannie but she also needs to learn how to mind her goddamn fucking business this is one reason why I don't meddle into none of my son's affairs with his wife or his woman you know what I'm saying because because it's not my business. Like, I don't really like being involved in shit like that. That's y'all relationship. And how y'all run y'all relationship is not how I would run my relationship. You know what I'm saying? And I say I say that because I don't know how y'all run y'all relationship. But I know it ain't the same way I run my shit, okay? And if it is, that's great to know as well. But I really don't give a fuck because I don't want to be in your business. Mothers need to mind their business sometimes. You know what I'm saying? When they grown, now I can see if your son or your daughter was being abused. And definitely you want to stand toes down, Okay. But you, you can't go around disrespecting their other partner just because that's what you feel you could do. And that's what you want to fucking do. That's not what you do. You know what I'm saying? You got to have respect for them as well. She kind of scared the lady off. And that sucks because, damn, I'm not about to allow anybody to scare me the fuck off. Now, one thing, you cuss me and be disrespectful to me. I'm going to cuss you and I'm going to be disrespectful back to you. But I'm damn sure not running away from you. Fuck out of here. That means that you look at me like I'm some kind of scaredy ass punk. And I would never want anybody to think that I'm some fucking scaredy ass punk. Not wearing these type of t shirts. Hell no. Okay. But yeah, Gary, you, you definitely need. Need to talk to your mom but you also need to find out where your son is i would definitely keep sending messages to her and try to convince her and let her know you know that you had a conversation apologize and maybe she'll come around but then again you do have child support so maybe they can track her whereabouts now you know and find out where she's at you know it is still tell you where she's spending the card at you know you understand what i'm saying so i would just work start from there with child support ask them could they help you locate her or what have you but really need to talk to your mama Cause she's a meddling ass mom, and that's one thing. Like I said, I don't do. I stay in my look. I mind my business because you know why too. You cannot be getting other people's relationships and their affairs. You just really can't. You know why? Because you can tell that person, oh, leave them alone. We're going to leave you alone. And that person could be going through some bullshit within, within their relationship. And they sitting there and they chit-chatting to you about the person. They like, oh, I hate them. And you be sitting there cheering them on. They're like, yeah, that's right. Girl. You know, they agree with everything you say. And then the moment they get back with them, they're like, don't say nothing about my man. Don't say nothing about my man, my man, my man. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't really like to meddle in nobody else's affairs. Like, no. Because you're not about to throw that back up in my face. But as a mother, I definitely don't like to do that. Because that's not my place like that's got to be so fucking embarrassing i can't imagine being a mother and meddling into my grown-ass son's life and child and, and child and baby mama drama like and that's just weird like go find something to do his mother need to go find you know, your mother need to go find a, a hobby garen tell her to take up some kind of bingo or something i don't know tell her to do something with her time but yeah just she needs to go find something to do with her time but not be meddling in yours but i hope you know what i said was good enough advice for you because Dude, you got to start. The first place is with your mama. Mm -hmm. but anyway, you guys, I'm going to go, you know, let the lady and the gentleman down below, Dalen and Garrett. Dalen, right? I think I said that correctly. Dalen and Garrett know what y'all would do in their situation. Girl, I'm going to go put my smell goods away. Y'all make sure y'all check out Dossier Perfume. Okay, so that way y'all could be smelling good for tis the season. Okay. Yes, girl. Okay. I don't know about these t-shirts. I'm really trying to think, should I just keep them? 
Or should I just send them back? I, maybe I'll just keep them and just I'll just buy me some different ones. You know, as my, I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I just feel like I'm, I'm missing like the basketball shorts somewhat, you know? I don't know. Maybe if I cut the sleeves up, you know, make it look a little bit more feminine. I'm going to figure that out. But I love you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs the video up. And I'll see y'all later. Bye. Go, go. Go, go.